like we're reset to something big coming up on your screen. Just settle back and relax, cause you're gonna get a whole lot of singing, a whole lot of laughing, a whole lot of loving from me. I slept like a baby last night. I woke up this morning with a bottle in my mouth. <laughs> and this has been a beautiful week. The police commissioner of Beverly Hills, Beverly, there's an L in there. Beverly Hills did a real nice thing. He put up a new traffic sign in my honor. Crawl and don't crawl. <laughs> and, uh, and the president of NBC is a real thoughtful guy. For Valentine's Day, he sent me candy. Not the chocolate, the actual girl from the movie. <laughs> ah, and I appreciate it. I may be married, but I'm not a fanatic about it. <laughs> oh, of course I'm kidding. You know... No, no, you know what it means when you come home and there's someone there to meet you with a hug and a kiss and a kind word? It means you're in the wrong house. <laughs> Of course, you know something or you wouldn't be here, would you? All idiots, you gotta know something. My genie and me, well, we're married 19 years and we never took a honeymoon and we're finally gonna take one. She's going in July and I'm going in August. <laughs> Some happiness on me So the brighter side You'll see No more loneliness To be a least Some happiness on me Tell me I'm great And I'll be greater Build me up and I'll fly Love me now And I'll be glad later Tell your troubles goodbye Lay some happiness on me So the brighter side you'll see No more loneliness to be Lay some happiness on me Spill that cup of trouble and sorrow Sooner the better for you Fill it up with happy tomorrow We got some living to do I'll lay some happiness on me So the brighter side you'll see No more loneliness to be I'll lay some happiness on me Curl me up and I'll squeeze tighter Lips kiss me do Oh, a good, good lover Makes a bad, bad fighter And I'm not thinking of you So lay some happiness On me So the brighter side You'll see No more loneliness To be I Lay some happiness On me Lay some happiness On me So the brighter side You'll see No more loneliness Kids got a voice. If Ronald Reagan had his tonsils, even college students would listen to him. <laughs> hey, you're a wild audience, and we got a special gift for all of you. A bar of special heavy-duty soap. <laughs> no, for you people who are having trouble removing Hubert Humphrey bumper stickers from your cars. <laughs> I ain't gonna say that again. Fifty girls, count them fifty. Fifty, count them, fifty glorious girls Fifty girls, ain't that nifty Every shape, every size What a sight for sore eyes Fifty treats, fifty treasures Fifty peachy, perfect pepper pearls 
strung out in one long luscious line Not forty-eight, not forty-nine But fifty, count them, fifty glorious girls Fifty girls, wow. count them, fifty I'm so very proud of them Fifty, count them, fifty glorious girls What a lovely crowd of them Fifty girls, yeah. ain't that nifty Everyone a gem one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So many do and do the rate. Fifty drinks. I know. Fifty treasures. Ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty. Forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight. Fifty count em, fifty glamorous. Fifty count em, fifty glittering. Fifty count em, fifty glorious. <laughs> so, forty-nine and a half. Fifty girls, count them fifty. Fifty, count them fifty glorious girls. Fifty girls, ain't that nifty? Every shape, every size, what a sight for sore eyes. Fifty feet, fifty pages. Fifty feet, she felt a fifty with her. Listen, friend, what I did you Count the legs, divide by two Fifty Nice to be back for the new television season, and NBC was real nice to me this year. They tore up my old contract. Now I'm the only guy in the business with a torn contract. <laughs> they also had a decorator come in, and he redid my dressing room to fit my image. It's real lush. <laughs> and they also put they put in a beautiful shag rug. It's made out of two hippies. <laughs> wow, we own it. He's only kidding. Don't jump my car. Yeah, this... This should be a great television station. Doris Day is going to be a lot sexier this year. She got silicone injections in her freckles. <laughs> and ABC's got a new show called The Young Lawyers. One for each Smothers brother. <laughs> and Love American Style, Love American Style, Love American Style is coming back. That's Zsa, Zsa Gabor and anybody. <laughs> going to have a lot of new children's programs this year. The Peacock stopped taking the pill. <laughs> and on Wednesday nights, and on Wednesday nights, NBC's going to have a new show on called The Psychiatrist. He's going to try to explain how the rest of the shows got on. <laughs> and my good friend Orson Welles is with us. Wells. There's a S on in there. Well, you know, he paid for the full name. And, uh, and here's Orson now to show you just what happens when puppy love gets carried too far. This is your first. Yeah, my dog's never been pregnant before. <laughs> it's my own fault. I should never let her take that course in sex education obedience school. Believe me, it's better than having your dog pick it up on the streets. <laughs> uh, come on, relax and sit down. Okay. How long has your dog been married? <laughs> what? what? How long has your dog been married? Clarissa? Yeah. Well, I, the reason I hesitate is because I'd rather not talk about it. Uh, the old story, another dog in trouble. Please, I, I'm so ashamed. I don't know how it happened. She's not even allowed on the couch. Besides, she was always such a good girl. Yeah. Yes, they're all good girls. Let them out of your sight for two seconds, they fall for the first cold nose that comes along. <laughs> what about the father? Will the dog stand by her? 
I doubt it. He he didn't look too reliable. <laughs> I should have known he was no good. Any dog that can do this with his paw. I know the fun. He probably invited her to dinner and slipped something into her kibble. My poor little Clarissa. this cute little nose and this cute little tail? Well, it's obvious it wasn't her nose he was interested in. <laughs> Congratulations. She just gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. Shall I bring the puppy in? I, I, I don't want to see the baby. In fact, I don't even think I can forgive Clarissa here. Oh, no, no. That's, that's hardly a charitable attitude. Why don't you at least reconsider and look at the puppy? I'm sure once you've seen him, You'll forgive, Clarissa. Well, okay. Nurse, would you bring in the puppy? <laughs> that is Clarissa's baby. You're right, I forgive her. She's suffered enough. <laughs> Us feel so nice and warm when Dean sings, and everything's comfy and informal. When Dean sings, <laughs> my voice is so sexy. Every time I sing all alone by the telephone, I get an obscene call. <laughs> I fell in love with you first time I looked into them. Their eyes, you got a certain little way of flirting with them their eyes they make me feel so happy they make me blue <laughs> girl no starling <laughs> not a darling all in a big way for great big you my heart is jumping you sure started something with them their eyes you'd better watch them if you want They sparkle Deep bubbles Gonna get you in a whole lot of trouble You're, You're overworking Ain't you looking in Them, them their eyes Boy, you girls didn't get to so Those fingers in my hair That's, that's my like Come hither stare That strips my conscience bare about the second year of the variety show we were a top ten show and remained that way for what eight nine years whatever we were on for ten and there wasn't a performer a star nowhere anywhere in the industry that didn't do the show or wanted to do the show they were all easy to pick up the phone call their agent and they were there 
Very, very few people ever said, well, no, my hair hurts or something, I can't go on, I'm doing another movie. Most everybody. I mean, if you can get John Wayne and Jimmy Stewart, you know, and Bing Crosby and Sinatra, and by, with, with a telephone call, give me a break. The whole world will come and do the show. No, no, th this isn't Henry. Y yes, this is the booth at the corner of Wilshire and Beverly, but I, I'm the only one here. I don't, I don't, oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 ju just a second, man. Hey, fella. What? Uh, are you Henry? No, my name is not Henry. <laughs> uh, he, uh, he doesn't seem to be here, ma'am. Uh-huh, uh, oh, I see. Uh, you're his wife, and you were supposed to meet him here. Well, look. Hey, uh, hey buddy. I, hey, uh, buddy. Uh, Henry's calling on the next phone here. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh that's good. I'm, I'm speaking to his wife, Martha. Oh, well, well uh, Henry, Henry says to tell Martha, this is Henry, just tell Martha that he's, he's held up at the office and he'll be half an hour late. Ah, uh, well, Martha, uh, Henry's on the next phone. And he says he'll be an hour late. I, and, uh, I, uh, oh, I, uh, would you please give Henry this message from Martha? Don't bother to show up at all. I'm going home to mother. Uh, oh, well, Henry says, but uh, a Tweety doll... Oh, because you don't love me anymore. Oh, good. No, he's, of course I love you. You're, you're my little poopsie pie. <laughs> well, then, how's it come you never buy me flowers? How's it come you never treat me romantic like you used to? <laughs> me not romantic? Who's the one that always has a headache, whose face is always covered with cold cream and, and hair curlers? You see, you don't love me, you just love my body. <laughs> well, well, listen, with all that cold cream and hair curlers, half the time I can't even find your body. You beast. <laughs> and uh, after I've given you the best years of my life. Well, well stop it, pussy cake. Cake, you know. A uh, cake, you said, right? Yeah, pussy cake. You know, I can't stand to see you cry. Isn't there something I can do to prove how I love you? Well, well, Mr. Thompson, just next door, bought Mrs. Thompson the biggest ruby necklace I ever saw. He did? Well, tomorrow I'm gonna buy you a ruby necklace that'll make uh, Mrs. Thompson's ruby necklace look like a heat rash. Well, then you do love me. Well, of course I do, poopsie, tweety, baby, honey. Well, <laughs> well uh, oh, dang. <laughs> Uh, darn it, I, I can't even remember who I was going to phone. Oh, oh, I just remember. Uh, operator, could, could you get me the fire department? My house is on fire. <laughs> Yeah.
pants are. Sensational. Where'd you get them? I've had hot pants since I was 12 years old. <laughs> What's on the club? Okay. Listen, Art. Yesterday, the styles were very proper. A plain black suit, a white tie, and a topper. Oh, yeah. But, But today, 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 look what's happening today. What's your pleasure? Well, if I told you that, we'd be off the air. <laughs> My dress is caught on this funky little stool. I thought maybe it'd help me, Deanie. No, I no. never touch old ladies. Oh, you know. really? <laughs> Actually, it's, uh, it's uh, the station break announcement time. We, we'd better read it, huh? Yes. You, yes. Card, card person. Here I am, Mr. Martin. <laughs> Isn't she graceful? Not particularly. <laughs> When she walks, it looks like she's got two kids fighting under a blanket. <laughs> Now, why don't you tell the people where the announcement is written, honey? All over my body. <laughs> Poor deformed creature. <laughs> don't you think she has a terrific figure? Are you kidding? I put my body up against hers any time. I don't care, just as long as you don't put yours up against mine. What's your name, honey? June. June. Sure. She sure is busting out all oh, yeah. over, isn't she? Where did you bump into her? Well, I'll give you two good guesses. Now, come on, Maud. Let's read the announcement. All right. right. We'll, we'll be right back, folks, so... Tell me, June, are you doing well in show business? Oh, very well. Except my agent wants to take 10% off the top. Well, that's the only place you can really afford it. <laughs> Let's do it together now. We'll, we'll be right back, folks, so don't go away. <laughs> really, Daisy, take away that sexy bikini, and what have you got? In this state, 20 years. <laughs> I found Dom DeLuise at a little club in New York, and uh, he was performing with his wife, Carol, at the time. And I just came to him and I said, listen, I said, uh, I'm working in California and uh, I'm involved with uh, the Dean Martin show. Would you like to come out there? And he went, ba 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 yes, 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 that was it. He stopped stuttering and he came to California and he became one of our favorite performers and did the show. A lot. I think Dom DeLuise was probably a guest on the Dean Martin show more than any other performer. Dean really liked him. Look at this restaurant. Great atmosphere, wonderful food, delightful music. The only thing that could ruin a place like this for you is to have Dom DeLuise as a waiter who is trying to get rid of a very annoying housefly.
ladies and gentlemen, the internationally renowned pianist, Mr. Victor Borga. He's a real nice man, but a real hard luck guy. You won't believe this, but he once had a lead pencil that leaked. <laughs> what? I just found out that my dressing room's wired. I got a hunch. Genie is hired someone to watch over me. <laughs> See, you gotta go fast when you have a punchline that they know. I wanna be around to pick up the pieces when Rocka Welch falls apart. <laughs> Oh, we still on? Yeah, really. Well, Ken, I'm going to go to the couch now, but before I go, just remember the famous words of William Randolph Hearst, who once said, you show me a clean newspaper and I'll show you a parakeet with a serious problem. <laughs> I've been, I've been thinking about something. Uh, you know, my club is in a little bit of trouble. I, I need a long ball hitter. Uh, how are you on curves? Oh, well, yeah, I can handle curves, yeah. Well, uh, I think we just made a deal. Yeah? <laughs> now, just hold it, hold it. Just a minute, Pally. Yes? You may get thrown out at home. Oh, come on, girls. <laughs> he thinks the whole world is an umpire. <laughs> By the time I get to Phoenix, she'll be rising. She'll find a note I left hanging on her door. She'll laugh when she reads the part that says I'm leaving. Cause I've left that gap. So many times before By the time I make Albuquerque She'll be working She'll probably 
stop at lunch Give me a call But she'll just Hear that phone Keep on ringing Off the wall That's all By the time I may go Oklahoma She'll be sleeping She'll turn softly And call my name alone Then she'll cry Just to think I'd be the Time and time Tried to tell her so She just didn't know I would really go a travel agency. I swore to my wife I'm not going to go to Europe anymore. But my wife loves to travel. I took her to Spain. She did something with a bullfight no American tourist had ever done before. She threw up on the people in front of her. <laughs> hey, not this, uh, this travel agency has a packing plant. up in a package and they mail you there. Of all the places I saw in Europe, I liked Italy the best. I took a beautiful picture there with my camera. I took a picture of the guy stealing my camera. <laughs> Venice is a beautiful city too, but all the streets are underwater, so I don't shop much over there because it's very hard to swim while you're holding a shopping bag. <laughs> Laugh it up, folks. This is near the end. <laughs> Funny thing about traveling, everybody gets so excited. <laughs> Uh, let me bust. They always want to meet new people. They want to go out and see something different. And who do they see? Gloria Jones from Saginaw, Michigan. Freddie McGee from Delray Beach, Florida. Charlie O'Rourke from Seattle, Washington. Millie LaRue from Council Bluffs, Iowa. And Jaime Lichtenberg from the Bronx. Those escorted tours in Paris leave no one alone, a minute alone. So I slipped off to see Versailles Palace, and right there in back of the throne were Gloria Jones from Saginaw, Michigan, Freddie McGee from Delray Beach, Florida, Charlie O'Rourke from Seattle, Washington, Millie LaRue from Council Bluffs, Iowa, and Heidi Lichtenberg from the I stopped. I stopped. I stopped at a spa near West King. Though I thought I might as well have me a cup. I sat by myself in the garden, but there as I turned and looked up were Gloria Jones from Saginaw, Michigan, Freddie McGee from Delray Beach, Florida, Charlie O'Rourke from Seattle, Washington, Millie LaRue from Council Bluffs, Iowa. Hey! Signorita, he showed me his edgings 
and Lola. But they're taking pictures outside work. Gloria Jones from Saginaw, Michigan. Freddie McGee from Delray Beach, Florida. Polly O'Rourke from Seattle, Washington. Millie LaRue from Castle Bluffs, Iowa. Congenial people like me And Gloria Jones From Simon of Michigan Freddie McGee From Galway Beach, Florida Charlie O'Rourke From Seattle, Washington Billy LaRue From Council Bluffs, Iowa And I'm oh, tired I mean left in white here And uh, Okay, everybody get your tickets <laughs> If you were to ask who are my favorite television performers, I'd say I'd have to head the list with Bob Newhart, probably followed by Don Rickles. But Newhart was extremely special. Bob was a great monologist. He wrote most of his material. And when he did Dean's show, he didn't come in and do it as a stand-up monologue. What we did was we took established Bob Newhart monologues, broke them down and adapted them so that Dean could work with Bob Newhart. So the sketches that you see with Dean and Bob Newhart were for the most part Bob's monologues adapted by our writing staff to incorporate Dean. And for the most part, once again, Dean is ad-libbing along with Bob Newhart through a lot of it. Tonight, Dean and I would like to salute a group of men who are largely un unsung, who daily risk their lives that others might live. I'm, of course, talking about America's driving instructors. Now, I will play the driving instructor, and I'm waiting in the car for my student, Mrs. Webb. had some ugly students. <laughs> now, according to our file here, your, uh, your name is, is Mrs. Webb, is that correct? That's correct. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> according to this, you've had one lesson already. Uh, do, you, do you happen to remember the instructor's name on that? Uh, Mr. Adams. 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 Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Here, let, let me just uh, read ahead a bit. I might go ahead, go ahead. familiarize myself with your. Um, how uh, how how fast were uh, were you going when when Mr. Adams jumped from the car? Seventy-five. Seven, seven. <laughs> where, where, where where was that now? It's in my driveway. We were backing out. Back in, back in. I did. Uh, did Mr. Adams cover uh, st starting the car? He, he, he got that far, did he? Hmm? Mike, you, you want to you, you want to start the car, and we'll pull out into the into the stream of traffic. Hmm? <clears throat> uh, Mrs. Webb, you just just turn on the windshield wipers. You want to, <laughs> you want to start the car? <laughs> uh, the, the, the heck with it. Leave the heater on. That that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> Go, go ahead. You, you only have one left. Mm -hmm. There we are. All right, let, let's pull out into the stream of traffic. Uh, what, what's the first thing we're, we're going to do be, before we pull out into traffic? What, 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 what did Mr. Adams do be, before he let you pull out into traffic? You mean besides blessing himself? <laughs> That's what, what I had in mind was checking the rearview mirror. You see, we, we always want to check the rearview mirror. Did you pull out? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't cry, Mr. Webb. I didn't. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Didn't mean to shout at you like that. Uh, just, just that there was a cement truck. You, you see. 
Right, you, your name is clear. Now, you, you want to pull out? Hmm? Very, very good. Very, all right, now let's, let's get up just a bit more speed and, and ease, it, ease it into second. Ha ha! Well, I just, just hadn't intended to cover reverse this, this early. It's just that the other cars uh, honking made me so nervous. Make, makes you nervous, huh? Try, try not to pay too, too much attention to their honking. You're doing very well. You, you really are. I keep having a funny feeling I'm blocking somebody's lane. No, as, as a matter of fact, as, as long as you're here on the safety island, you, you couldn't... Uh... <laughs> couldn't be blocking anyone's lane. All right, let's, let's practice some turns now. Uh, the important thing is you want to remember on turns, try not to make them too sharp. Just kind of make it. <laughs> that, that was very good. Just, just a little fast. Um, one, one other thing. See, uh, see this is a one-way street. Uh, <laughs> actually, that may, may have been even partially my fault, you see, but you, uh, you were in the left-hand lane, and, and you, you, were, you were signaling left, and... Uh, I don't know, I just uh, automatically assumed you, you were going to turn left. Is, is it... <laughs> say, uh, same to you, fella! <laughs> what did he say? I, I couldn't make out what he said. Uh, Mr. <laughs> uh, Mr. Webb, you want to get out of the stream of traffic uh, coming at us? Pull <laughs> <laughs> oh, in the alley there, anywhere, anywhere! <laughs> this... This is something not, not too many of the schools uh, stress too much. We happen to think it's kind of important. It's called uh, alley driving. <laughs> we might drive around the alleys for the rest of the hour. <laughs> I'll tell you what, there's a practice area not too far away from here. It might not be a bad idea if we went over there. Turn right here. That, that's the way. It, 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 it will build up your confidence. Yeah, turn right here. That, it, um... Well, now that, that was my fault again, you see. Uh, yeah, I, I'm in at the corner. <laughs> Of this man's lawn, you see. <laughs> so, uh, sorry, sir. You want to back out, uh, Mrs. Webb? Sorry, sir. Sorry. Yeah, he's going for the hose. Back out, Mrs. Webb. <laughs> Miss, uh, Mrs. Webb, we uh, now we just backed into someone. Uh, do, you, do you recall at all uh, my earlier talking about the rearview mirror? <laughs> well, the red light blinded me. red light. The flashing red lights on the car just hit. <laughs> she, she, was, she was just telling me about it, officer, as a matter of fact. <laughs> no, I, actually, you're right, I suppose. I, I should have had her signal. Uh, see, I, I don't know what the signal is uh, for coming off someone's lawn. That, that was right. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Webb, I'm going to have to go with the officers uh, to the police station. Uh, Before you go, I want to be sure to get your name. Well, uh, my, my name is Frank Dexter. Wh wh why do you ask? I want to be sure and ask for you the next time. <laughs> and as we pay our last respects to Charles Wilkman, not only the founder and president of the Jogging Association, but always a dear, dear friend, though he has been taken from us, I think he'll know that we'll carry on the proud jogging traditions that he left behind. Amen.
five miles in 32 minutes, 16 seconds. That, that's one minute, eight seconds off your old time. You never look better, guys. Dean and Frank knew one another for 20 years, 25 years before, you know, Dean ever went on his own television show. Before Dean ever worked with Jerry, he was a friend of Frank's. Knew Frank, hung up with Frank, played baseball with Frank. Sometimes it was at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. They were great friends. They were, of course, you know, notorious for being the original Rat Pack. It was, what was it, Frank and Dean and Sammy Davis and, and Peter Lawford and, and Joey Bishop. But when you really stop to think about it, the Rat Pack is really the two guys. It's, it's Frank and Dean. The other guys were kind of, they filled in. Sammy was wonderful. But it was really the, the, the two guys that made it work. And they felt so comfortable together. Just around the corner, and he closed a little corner. Love is just around the corner when I'm around you. I'm a sentimental mourner, and it couldn't be for Lorna when you keep me on the corner, just wait for you. Venus de Milo, she was noted for her charm. But strictly between us, you're cuter than Venus. And what's some more, you got in the arms. In. Let's go cuddle in the corner. And in cozy little corner. Now just around the corner. Oh, and I'm around you. Like an angel walks. What else does she do? And she talk like a what? Like an angel talk. About her hair. Her hair, sunny boy, has a kind of curl. To my mind, she's some kind of girl. She's my kind of girl. She is wise, like how wise? Like an angel's wise. <laughs> With eyes, like an angel's eyes. Do she smile? And the smile. Like a kind of pearl To my mind She's my kind of girl Every little face ah, That face just knocks me Off her feet Pretty little feet She's really sweet Enough to eat Oh, she, she what? looks She looks like an angel Looks her. She cooks like an angel cooks, and my mind in a kind of world. To my mind, she's my kind of girl. Love is funny or it's sad. It's quiet or it's mad. It's a good thing or it's bad. Oh, but beautiful, beautiful. Where we going? To take a chance, take a little walk. When you fall, you fall. What? And I'm thinking I wouldn't mind at all. Love is cheerful or it's gay. It's a problem or it's play. <laughs> it's a heartache either way. But beautiful. Thinking that if she were mine, I'd never let her go. And that would be what beauty says oh, both of them. And so, oh, oh. You, Al, is for the way you look on me. Oh, it's for the only one I see. Me is very. Very, a very, very extraordinary. E is even more than anyone that you adore can. Love is all that I can give to you. Love is more than just a game for two. Two in love can make it. Take my heart and please, Lord, you break him. Love 
was made for you and me. My story is much too sad to be told. But practically everything leaves me totally cold. You gotta listen, the door's locked. <laughs> the only exception I know is the case. When I'm out on a quiet spree. Oh, hold it down, there's somebody sleeping back there. <laughs> Fighting mainly the old ennui. <laughs> Your fabulous day. I get no kick from champagne. Alcohol doesn't thrill me. Alcohol doesn't thrill you. I don't believe a word of that. Some like the perfume from Spain. I study with you. I'm sure that if I took even one sniff, why it would bore me to rip. Thankfully, too. Yet I get a a kick out of you. I get a kick when every time I see you standing there before I get a kick though it's clear to see that you obviously you do not adore So you met someone who set you back on your heel. Goody, goody. You met someone, and now you know how it feels. Goody, goody. So you gave her your heart too, just as I gave mine to you. And she broke it in little pieces. Now how do you do? Singing the blues all night. <laughs> Think that love is a barrel of dynamite. Where did you get the stuff? Hooray and hallelujah. Yeah, well, keep the conditions come yeah, on the show. Coming, coming through. Goody, goody for her. Goody, goody for me. And I hope you're satisfied, you rascal, you. When you see a guy reach for stars in the sky, you can bet that he's doing it for some dog. When you spot a John waiting out in the rain, chances are he's insane, as only a John can be for the chain. When you see a gent paying all kinds of rent for a flat. That would flatten the Taj Mahal. Call it sad, call it funny, but it's better than even money. That the guy's only doing it 